This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Crystal, I'm 36, and I live in Big Bear, California. My California dream was to marry tall, dark, and handsome, and to raise a family in Big Bear. My two sons are the most important things to me in the whole world. My oldest son is 16 years old, and my younger son, Jordan, is 11 years old. Crystal was a typical soccer mom. She would pick him up from school, take him to practice, dropping one kid off, to picking him one up, to going to get the other one. Um, they never left her side. I miss my boys. I wish I didn't destroy their lives like I didn't. I would say it's been at least a year since she's lived with the boys. Drugs and alcohol have taken over her life. I'm addicted to alcohol. Have you ever done any? Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. Right now, it's become over addiction. It's more of like I need it just to cope and get through. Crystal drinks up to two handles of whiskey a day. Alcohol, it's a painkiller. It's killing all the pain. I've been through so much. And not seeing my kids and what I put my kids through. Just not wanting to be here. Crystal's boyfriend, Matt, she depends on him for money and a place to live. Crystal, after the drinking, turned into a whole different person, someone I don't even know. Crystal's been to jail a couple times. I got arrested on a drunk in public DUI. And last month, I went to jail on a domestic violence because I started a fight with Matt. A few months ago, Crystal was charged with assault on a police officer. I think she's still dealing with that. I was doing fentanyl until recently. But right now, I'm deathly afraid of it. The drinking and the drugs really destroyed her. I don't know if she'll ever be the same. I want her to live, and I want her to be happy, because she hasn't been happy for a very long time. My dad was my hero. He was LAPD. He worked off the mountain, so he was only here on the weekends. My family was happy in front of people, but both of my parents were alcoholics. My mother, who was still um, in her addiction, um, lost custody of Crystal. The time that Crystal, Cassie, and myself lived with my dad was a trying time. My stepmom, uh, she was very mentally and verbally abusive to my sister. She said I wasn't pretty, she said I wasn't smart. I told my dad and he didn't believe me. I ran away when I was 15 and I came up here to Big Bear with my mom. She let me get away with anything. And that's when I started drinking. And then one night I went down to the dock and there was a young boy there and I got drunk and I passed out and he had sex with me. And that's how I lost my virginity. I woke up with blood on my bathing suit and splinters in my back from rubbing against the dock. I dropped out of high school the last month of my sophomore year. I tried so hard to get him to not do drugs, and it was like irritating to me that he chose drugs over me. After I found out that I was pregnant, I quit everything completely. I finally had that all-American dream. We could all tell something was troubled in Crystal's relationship. He was still partying and doing drugs, and I was completely sober at that time. And I didn't want to leave because I didn't want to hurt my kids. I wanted to just have a normal family life. Crystal did suffer from uh, physical abuse. A breaking point in our relationship was when I was 28. He punched me so hard right here that it pulled my face apart and split my, my bone right here is broken. It was horrible. I just felt stuck. I felt worthless. So um, a little over 18 months ago, I just slipped my wrist. It wasn't really like a suicidal attempt. It was more a cry for help. I finally left, and I left the kids there. They knew that he wasn't like a real threat to them. Because he had never been abusive toward the kids, ever. When she went into rehab, it got worse. She met this guy, Barry. The first time I shot at heroin was with Barry. He taught me how to shoot up. He 
assisting someone to rehab and to get better, and then they come out a heroin addict, kind of, kind of blew me away. And then after rehab, she started living with Matt, and then she started drinking again. Jordan has been living with me. She knew that she couldn't take care of him and knew that we'd be the best thing for him. Crystal's older son, being a little older, could make his own decisions, so he went and lived with his father. Right now, their father is on fentanyl meth. In fact, he has tried to get me to, as he would say, get lit with him in the last couple of weeks. So I don't want my boys to live with their dad. All right, Mom, he loves you, Jojo. Jojo loves you, Mommy. <laughs> would you do me a favor and do a drug test? No opiates, no painkillers, no heroin. How are you dirty on coke? Because I do coke. I am an alcoholic, but I also do meth and coke. I'm addicted to all three. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what happened with growing up? For Crystal, it was hell. Her stepmom put her through hell. She was very verbally and mentally abusive to Crystal, very. She locked Crystal in a basement, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and put her room outside underneath the house. And how did your dad handle it? He comes from law enforcement background. Mm -hmm. So it was like, hey, you know, I deal with this stuff at work every day. I don't want to come home and deal with it. Figure it out. And then she ran away and was disconnected from my dad. She didn't have that contact anymore. And then my dad passed away at a young age. So Crystal doesn't have the closure she with no my dad. No closure yeah. with my dad at all. We've put her through a six month rehab. That's where she met Barry. When I first saw Barry in rehab, I fell in love with him at first sight. We got together officially right away. And how long were they together? Three months, four. And Barry uh, passed away a month ago in her arms of a heroin overdose. Heroin laced with fentanyl. So Barry ended up overdosing and dying in her arms? Yeah, yeah. Barry Real. passed away. Not a, it's been a month. Oh, it's about a month and a half, I think. That recently? Yeah. yeah. I was sober for three weeks. And I got high with him that day because I figured, F it, I'm not strung out. And he thought that he had like a tolerance, so then he put the fennel in the syringe with the heroin. And I told him, don't f with the fennel, don't f with it. And he did. And then <laughs> he, he bit too much. And he died. <laughs> and my arms. And I can still hear the last breath that he took and the last heartbeat. Oh, no. And then there's Matt. And he thinks he's helping her because, you know, she'll go through withdrawals and start hurting and aching, and he'll go out and get her what she needs, so he's enabling. And he keeps her liquored and pilled up um, because every time she gets sober, she leaves him. Yeah. So, oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Crystal. Crystal, hello? Hi, baby. Come here. Sorry. No, you're okay. No, you're okay. But yeah, last night, we were fine. She was just drinking. Then we came in, and within 15 minutes, she's in the bathroom, and she's throwing up. And I see it was some white foam. It started coming out both sides of her mouth, and I just said, holy F. And I called that uh, paramedics. I me and the producer got a call from Matt that she ended up drinking too much last night. He noticed foaming from her mouth, and she said she couldn't breathe. They took her to the hospital, but they released her this morning. The way they find people dead in the morning is with foam all over their mouth. That's how serious this is right now. So apparently I almost died last night. I actually stopped breathing. Are you serious? Yeah, I was in the hospital all night. Oh, Heads gosh. up, Crystal's on her way. I can't believe that. Everybody just wrote a little something down to tell you how much you mean to them. I don't even. I'm not happy right now, sorry. I'll start. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't be mad. But hold on. <laughs> she takes a drink. It's Crystal. Crystal, I love you. And I'm thankful to be here today reading this letter to you and not at graveside reading it about you. This isn't fair. So I want you to know 
how truly sorry I am that I didn't do anything to protect or defend you when our stepmom was threatening you, belittling you, and anything else that she could do to break your spirit. <laughs> I'm gonna do so much pain in the last few This is not fair. Please, sissy, take the help that they're offering. I think we need to go into the bottom lines. You know how much I love those boys? But I'm gonna do something I would never do, is I will go to, to the authorities. You know Don't put my kids them. in the system. We have to keep them safe. Yeah, and you guys all just wasted your breath, because it's not gonna happen, so. They're gonna get you more than They're help. They're gonna than, get you more help than the addiction. And you're gonna go there. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I am fine. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it. And I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not doing it for you guys. I'm doing it for me. Good. That's exactly <laughs> what we want to hear. And I wanna see my kids real fast. I wanna say goodbye to my kids first. Hey, it's Mother's Day. I love you, Georgia. We love you. I love you. Love you guys. Love you. Hey, I'm really glad you're here. I have been sober for 79 days, and I feel strong and healthy. My hopes for my boys are that they can trust me again, that I can be more involved in my kids' life sober and not as an embarrassment. Day by day, I will do the best that I can do to be sober, to be the best version of me, so I can be the best mom for them. I love you. I miss you so much. Love you. Miss you, too.